So when it comes to diagnosing Down syndrome, there are a few different ways that we can think about this, a few ways that we can think about diagnosis. So maybe let's start off by checking out the different time periods when we can look to see if someone has Down syndrome. So we can break this up as before birth, so what we call the prenatal period, and after birth, uh, so this is what we call the postnatal period. So these are the two sort of time periods when we can look to see if someone has or might have Down syndrome. So what can we do in the prenatal period before a baby is born? Well, there are actually two categories of tests that we can do during this period. So we have what we call prenatal screening tests. So let's write this down here. And then we have what we call prenatal diagnostic tests, and we'll put that down here. So a prenatal screening test is what we use to get an indication, to get an idea of the chances that a fetus has Down syndrome. It's almost like looking for risk factors. So we look at things like the mother's age, because once mom is over the age of 35 years old, the risk of Down syndrome starts to increase. And we look at what we call biomarkers in mom's blood. So these are different proteins that we can find in mom's blood that are made by either the fetus or the placenta or by mom herself. And we've actually figured out that there are some specific patterns in the levels of these proteins that can give us a clue as to whether mom is carrying a fetus with Down syndrome. So for example, we can take a look at mom's blood and look at the levels of a protein called estriol. And estriol is a hormone that is produced by the placenta. And we know that when mom is carrying a fetus with Down syndrome, the levels of this protein are actually lower than they are in a mom who isn't carrying a fetus with Down syndrome. So we look at the different levels of these markers, like estriol and some of the other ones that we know about, like HCG and PAP-A, which is pregnancy-associated plasma protein A, and inhibin and AFP, which is alpha fetoprotein. And we combine these findings with mom's age. Remember, women of any age can give birth to a child with Down syndrome, but there's a higher risk the older she is. And we can also add in an ultrasound to look for any physical signs of Down syndrome. So we use these to figure out what the risk is that mom's fetus will have Down syndrome. And actually looking in mom's blood for some of the fetus's circulating DNA can allow us to look for this extra chromosome 21 genetic material, and that can help us figure out the risk as well. So just to be super clear, this prenatal screening is not a way to diagnose Down syndrome. It's a way to get a prediction, an idea of what the risk is that the fetus has Down syndrome. So, you know, maybe we do these screening tests and put everything together and determine that a mom has a 1 in 100 chance of having a baby with Down syndrome. Or we might present this as a percentage, so a 1% risk. And we could think about this the other way around. So in this case, there's a 99% chance that the baby will not have Down syndrome. So once mom or the parents of the developing fetus are given this idea, this prediction of what the risk is that they will have a baby with Down syndrome, it's up to them to decide if they want to have an actual prenatal diagnosis test. So with screening tests, we only get an idea of what the risk is for Down syndrome. But with a diagnostic test, we are able to diagnose Down syndrome with almost 100% certainty. So if a mom or the parents are concerned about the risk of Down syndrome, they might want to do a diagnostic test to confirm or rule out Down syndrome basically definitively. So in order to diagnose Down syndrome, we need to actually take a look at the fetus's DNA. And there are two ways that we can do this in the prenatal period. And which test we do often depends on where in the pregnancy, so how far along mom is. So the first prenatal diagnostic test that we can do here is what we call chorionic villus sampling. And let's actually make a little drawing here to see what this is. So here inside mom is the placenta, which develops in the uterus during pregnancy and is what provides the growing fetus with oxygen and nutrient-rich blood for mom and also helps remove waste, which the fetus produces. And most of the placenta is actually made up of these projections here, which are what we call the chorionic villi. And these chorionic villi actually contain DNA from the developing fetus here. So what we can do is we can actually go in here and take a sample to get this DNA from the fetus. So we can go in through the cervix or we can go through the abdominal wall here. And which one we choose often just depends on how the placenta is positioned here in mom because this can vary a bit. 
So once we're inside, we take a little sample of the chorionic villi, and we are then able to actually look at the chromosomes in the cells that we have taken here, which contain the fetus's DNA. So we look at these and we count the chromosomes and check out how they look to see if it looks like there is any extra genetic material from chromosome 21. So in the majority of cases, if the fetus has Down syndrome, we would see three copies of chromosome 21 in each of these cells that we would have sampled here. And you might remember that there are a few other ways that a fetus can have extra genetic material from chromosome 21. But in most cases, if the fetus has Down syndrome, we would see three copies of chromosome 21 in all of the cells that we sampled here from the chorionic villi. So if mom or the parents wanted to have a diagnostic test done in the first trimester, around weeks 11 to 12, we would generally do this chorionic villi sampling to diagnose Down syndrome. Now, sometimes mom or the parents might decide to have a diagnostic test done a little bit later during the pregnancy, maybe during the second trimester, so around 15 to 19 weeks into the pregnancy. And when we're a little further along into the pregnancy, like we are here in the second trimester, there's actually another prenatal diagnostic test that we can do for Down syndrome. And this test is called an amniocentesis, where amnio is referring to the fluid, called the amniotic fluid, inside mom surrounding the developing fetus. And it's this amniotic fluid that actually contains cells that have been shed from the growing fetus. So these cells, they contain the fetus's DNA, right? So for this test, a needle is inserted here into the abdomen and into the uterus where we can take some of this amniotic fluid. And once we have this sample, we can look, just as we did here with the chorionic villi sampling, to take a look to see if there's any extra 21st chromosome or extra genetic material from the 21st chromosome in the cells of the developing fetus. Now you might be wondering why we do this test a little later than we did the chorionic villi sampling. And the main reason for that is because it actually takes time for the amniotic fluid to build up inside mom here. So we've figured out that around this period, during the second trimester, there's usually enough amniotic fluid to take a sample without too much risk. Now I should mention that regardless of when we do these tests, these prenatal diagnostic tests, for both of them there is a very small risk of miscarriage or losing the pregnancy. But at these time periods here, these risks are at their lowest. Now in our second time period here, so postnatally, once the baby is born, we can often see pretty early on that the baby has the physical characteristics of Down syndrome. So for example, the slanted eyes, the flattened profile of the face and the bridge of the nose. But some of these features can be present in kids without Down syndrome. So if we see these and we think that a child might have Down syndrome, we still need to take a sample of blood from the child and confirm that he or she has extra genetic material from chromosome 21. So if someone has Down syndrome, this is something that they'll have with them for their whole life. We don't have any treatments or medications or anything to cure or treat the intellectual disability and physical characteristics of someone with Down syndrome. So the aim of management for these aspects of Down syndrome is to maximize the quality of life and independence for someone with Down syndrome. So just as an example, maybe this might include an individualized program at school to make sure that someone with Down syndrome is able to get the most out of their education. So maybe more one-on-one -on -one time with teachers or a program that allows them to go at their own pace. And you might remember that there are actually a lot of conditions and disorders that people with Down syndrome are at an increased risk for. So a big part of managing Down syndrome actually involves managing or treating these conditions. So for example, if someone with Down syndrome has atrioventricular septal defect, which is a congenital heart disease that is really common in people with Down syndrome, well, they might need to get surgery to help fix this. Or maybe hearing aids would be a part of the management plan because as you might remember, trouble with or loss of hearing is another common problem for people with Down syndrome. And someone with Down syndrome might be on medications for these associated conditions. So for example, they might be on anti-seizure medications because they have epilepsy, which is another common condition in people with Down syndrome. 